Welcome back, everyone, as we continue with our weekly Fan and Press Luncheon with uh, now JMU men's basketball coach Matt Brady. As the regular season has come to a close, it is March 2nd. March Madness, but boy, was it a crazy end to the month of February. February freakiness, we'll call it there, after uh, the Dukes end up as the quad champions of the Colonial Athletic Association after uh, the turn of events on Saturday. Hey, you're a co-champ, coach. Well, we're certainly excited about uh, being a champion. And, you know, if you'd asked me after our Wilmington game on Wednesday we were going to be champions, we certainly didn't feel like champions. But I would say, not just, and I say this every week, not our league, but every league in the country. BYU goes to Gonzaga and leads wire to wire. How can you explain it? Um, so college basketball, there's tremendous parity, which is what makes this, great, this game so great. It's why fans are so avidly tied to their schools and, um, we're, we're certainly appreciative of a couple of upsets, uh, you know, a couple of real surprises, really. The, for Drexel to go to, to William & Mary without Damian Lee and to play, I thought, an extraordinary game and, and get a win, that was, that was a surprise. But the CAA, I think this is the way it's going to be, you know, for years to come. I, I think this is college basketball, great parity, a lot of even teams. And, if you don't play well, you're going to lose. Certainly, we've had a few games where we've not played well, and we certainly haven't won. So it's the way it's the way of college basketball. One of the great things about sports in general, and college sports certainly fits in there, is you can get a lot of arguments. <laughs> you know, you can you can debate uh, the merits of this or that, and and you look at it, and you do have four teams that finish at 12 and six to tie for first place. But coach, philosophically, where do you come from in the sense that some say it's because the league is down, it's not a good league. You've got Four teams with 60, you know, winning 67 percent of their games instead of one team dominating. So, how do you really judge that? Well, it's interesting. Every June, we have uh, head coaches in league meetings, and as as a, as, a, as, a, as an entity, the CA, we talk about we need to get better. When, when we lost a few good teams, you know, the last few years, we we recognize as coaches, we we need to kind of set the bar higher. Um, but in college basketball, it's really important to have older players. And when those teams had older players, they were really good. Blaine Taylor's teams at Old Dominion always had older players. They always had two seniors and two juniors starting. And, and George Mason was very similar. And, you know, VCU was very similar. And, and I would say the other part of it was no injuries. In my time here, those three programs had very, very, very few injuries. Trust me, I know, because I went back and looked at every box score when they were in our league. So I think there's a combination. You've got to be older, you've got to be healthy, and you have to be a little bit lucky. Um, we, we've, we've been healthy this year. We're not obviously older, but I, I think our league is somewhat young. And I, I would say to you, the future of this league, I think, is very bright. There's only six, I think, of the top 30 scorers in this league are seniors. So I think our, poised, our league is poised for really bright days ahead of us. So we're excited about that. All right, Coach, uh, let's review the last couple of games. Uh, down to UNC Wilmington, you carried a lot of momentum into that game, having won five in a row, including three on the road. Trask Coliseum, it's a tough place to play. And, and UNCW, just as uh, the Seahawks did here at the Convocation Center, got out early, and the Dukes just never recovered from the pressure that they apply. Well, and they did a tremendous job turning us over early in the game. I think we were one for eight, our first eight shots, with five turnovers, that's that's a bad way to start a game, certainly on the road. Uh, and, and as I said, after the game, give them a lot of credit. They play with tremendous energy. We didn't match it. We thought we were ready. And, and we, did, we didn't play a good enough game. And we didn't play well at all. And I thought they played really, really well. Uh, you know, subsequently they turned around and didn't play as well at Elon. So on senior day, with three really good seniors, they played. A, I thought they played a great game. And, and we, we, weren't, we weren't really there in that game. So I'm glad that we had the opportunity in the next game uh, at Hofstra to have a terrific first half. And we thought we, we fought them really. They came at us really hard in the second half. And then I thought we, we held them at bay a little bit. They got it to three. We made a few shots. And I thought we, we kind of put them back on their heels for the last four minutes of the game. One of the characteristics that's developed of this team, particularly uh, the last few weeks, is how you have finished the first half of, of ball game. Certainly you did so Saturday uh, against Hofstra. How do you feel, though, that you finished the first half against UNCW? Well, yeah, I appreciate you asking that because one of our things has been to start and end each half better than we had. Uh, and then you know, we put Joey in the lineup, played more man-to-man. -man. We certainly had done a very good job of st sticking to that script. 
But that first half at Wilmington, I thought that we played well. Um, we took better care of the basketball. We made it more difficult for them to get more open shots. Uh, and we cut that lead from, it seemed like 100 down to 8. And then they made a 3. And I thought a, a fairly contested 3 from Craig Ponder. And then we missed a shot at the end of the half. So had, we, had that shot not gone in, down 8, and we score, we're down 6. And not having played a very good half, really all came down to playing a much stronger second 10 minutes of the first half than first 10 minutes. Coach, it's that time of the year, too, where honors will be handed out later this week. And uh, you're involved in the voting. Each team, just for the fans' uh, interest here, each team will have a chance. Uh, you, the coaches vote, but not on their own players. And then you have two members of the media that cover your team, and then the sports information director for each team gets to vote as well. Uh, is Ron Curry worthy of a first-team all-conference selection? Well, you, you know, I'm not a, a politician. I think everybody knows that. But, I, he's, boy, that kid's played great. And we wouldn't be a co-champ if it weren't for his stellar performances down the stretch here. Um, I, you know what? He should get a lot of coaches' votes. That's the way I would say it. Whether or not it shakes out that way, I don't know. I'm, I, I'd be eager for him to, to get first-team recognition. Um, if he doesn't, though, as the coach of me with a year left, there is some incentive there that we can kind of bait him to work even harder in the offseason. Um, but, but certainly I think he's going to get a lot of He's going, to get, he's going to get a lot of uh, votes from a lot of these different coaches. I would think he's going to get the vote from Hofstra, and you can go down the list. Um, hopefully hopefully he'll, he'll be first team all league. I, I think he's earned it. His game against Hofstra, each week uh, he's, he's certainly showing improved signs here and there, but is that can you qualify that as maybe his most complete game, considering it was a tale of two halves and he, yeah. did, he did things differently in each half? Yeah, that's, that's true. Eight, eight assists in the first half and almost all of his points in the second half except for one basket. Uh, I thought he had, a very, he had an unbelievable second half at Hofstra. It, it helped us lead us to the win in that game. Uh, every time he's gotten 20, it seems like we've won except for maybe one game. It was a great performance, and, and I'm excited for Ron. Uh, you know, I thought the best play in that game, from my perspective, the end of the first half, they put the ball in Wanya Green's hands. We were in man-to-man, -man, and Wanya had the ball in front of our basket. And Ron guarded him. Wanya going to his left. For about 25 feet, he guarded and sliding his feet, and he just wouldn't let him turn the corner. And I think that's a, it's a first-team all-league caliber basketball player who was really intent on scoring in the last shot. And he almost hardly got that ball to the rim. I thought Ron played tremendous defense in that game as well. So Ron's played both ends for us. He hasn't just been a guy that scored the ball and assisted and – He's really been a terrific defensive player, and his leadership skills have been high level. Who other among the Dukes do you think uh, maybe should receive some votes, if not making one of the teams uh, this week? So, obviously, Johanny Dallenbert is a guy that uh, leads our league, I think, in field goal percentage, up there in blocks, uh, you know, has been the, the, probably the most improved player, maybe the, other than Tarpey from William Mary, maybe the most improved player in this league. He's a guy that we need his pr productivity to be, to be successful. Uh, certainly he would be the other guy. I don't know that Joey's had enough opportunity, and put that on me, to make all rookie team. Um, but if you extrapolate out those games where he's played really, really well, and if he had done that 18 times, probably makes the all rookie team. So, um, you know, I, I don't know that Jackson did enough, long enough, consistently enough to get on an all-league level team. But, uh, you know, certainly the future is bright for him as well. And now you will face Hofstra again. Third time, obviously, this season. Second time in back-to-back -back games. Uh, how does that change in terms of preparation when you've got a full week to, to go in for next Saturday's 2.30 game against an opponent you just you just defeated for the second time? Yeah, I don't know that either team is, or either coach will make a lot of changes here. We just met for as a staff here for a while. I think we've got to be prepared for their best shot for 40 minutes. I thought we got a great 10 minutes from them in the second half, the first 10 minutes. I thought they were really good. They were really aggressive. Our defense has been pretty solid against them. Uh, I think we've got to make less mistakes, number one. We've got to contain Bernardi. Tanksley has not played well against us in the two games. We've got to be prepared for him to play better. Uh, we've got to be prepared. We played a four-guard lineup in, in that game. I thought was was really critical for us to win that game. It helped get us out of a hole offensively when they came at us. Uh, so we're going to spend a little bit of time preparing for a four-guard lineup, although we'd like not to have to use it. Um, and we'll have to do some things better. But you, at this point of the season, you're not making wholesale changes. In facing Joe Mihalik, uh, you faced him as well when he was at Niagara. Uh, are you seeing some similarities 
when he coached there for the uh, the Purple Eagles now that he's with the Pride? Well, there's been, been a little bit of foot stopping down the other end, I've noticed, and, and haranguing of the officials off the record. Uh, he is a good friend, and I thought that uh, there were some, some calls that clearly went their way that I've just been notified that clearly should have maybe gone our way. Um, but he's a terrific coach. He's got a really good team. They're not going to lose a lot off that team. And I, and I did notice that he kept that team in the locker room uh, for a while after our, our win the other day. We're going to get their best shot here on Saturday, and, and we're going to have to play better. It's a neutral court game. They're fired up. They, that's a lot of pride in that locker room with those kids. They're a tough, scrappy bunch of kids. Um, you know, it, it's been a good rivalry, you know, Joe and I. And, and I don't know that we're very friendly during the game, but and we're really not after the game. Um, but, but hopefully we'll be able to pull a trifecta here. All right. You did introduce me to him, by the way, in case did. you uh, didn't yeah. remember that. All right, let's uh, give it to other members of the media here at O'Neill's Grill. How much does it benefit you guys that you, it's a week between facing Hofstra? Yeah, I, I don't know that it benefits either team. You know, I, I think uh, knowing Joe as well as I do, I, I, I think he's calling them a lot of names and getting them ready. I think he's getting them fired up, and we're going to play a very, you know, we're going to play a very hungry team on Saturday. Um, and we've, we've got to recreate an edge to our team. You know, I think that the, there's, there can be a false sense of security when, when you've won a game against anybody, but certainly when you've won twice, you, you know, there's, there's no separation between our two teams. And the fact that we won can hurt us. Um, so we have to make sure that we, we create an edge for our team here in the next few practices. Following up on Ron Curry's performance against Hofstra, was that performance kind of symbolic of how he has progressed throughout this entire season? Well, I'd like to think so. His, his play since early January has been tremendous, and uh, we've needed every one of those performances, you know, and we've needed every one of those baskets uh, and every one of those rebounds and every one of those steals. We've been in a lot of close games. We were four, that was another really close game. It ended up being, I think, double digits, but that game was a lot closer than nine points. Uh, and Ron was critical in, every, in a lot of those plays. I, you know, I think some other guys are going to need to play better than they did the other day. Um, certainly Ron's going to be ready. And, uh, you know, this team has been very even. And I, that, I like that about this group. And we're going to need to be very even. But we're still going to have to play with kind of a chip on our shoulder, um, you know, on the defensive end of the court. And confidence-wise, how do you integrate or manage the title of being co-champions into preparation going into this weekend? Yeah, you, you know what? I, I haven't really seen our team since we became champs. You know what I mean? So uh, we're not patting ourselves on the back. In fact, it won't be brought up today. I'm not going to congratulate us, uh, our team, on what I think is a significant accomplishment. Uh, there'll be time, you know, in the, in the postseason, in the after season to do that. Th these, these, these days we have are critical. They, they're rapid, they're fleeting, and we have, to, we have to use this time to get better and to address a, a few things that we need to get better at to, to give ourselves a better chance to win on Saturday. Speaking of this time off, you've got you know, an extended period of time. How do you utilize that? Do you rest them? Do you, do you, what, what do you do to keep a rhythm and a flow, as Coach Brooks said earlier? So I'll tell you what I do with my day off. I was in Chicago yesterday, and I, I left my house at 4.30. Um, Got to D.C., flew out, got to Chicago, was on a, was on a 10 o'clock flight that didn't land. It got rerouted from D.C. up to New York. So I, I got on a train at 3.30 this morning, got on a train from New York to D.C., got in my car at 8 in the morning. So there really hasn't been a lot of time off, and I'm sure our guys feel the same way. You know, I think they're ready to get back at it. We met as a staff here for the last hour. This is going to be really rapid. You know, there, there, there's very little time. There's no idle time here for our guys. Our guys need a day of rest. Um, but we're, we're ready to get going here. We're going to practice here in a half hour, and I think our guys are really going to be fired up for it. But, you know, I think the one thing that, you know, as a staff you have to do is there's a fine line. You know, I just said to my staff, what's the approach, you know, verbally and emotionally and mentally that we need to take with our group? Because you don't want to be satisfied. We really aren't going to talk about, you know, the fact that we're, we're uh, you know, a champion, you know, or a co-champ or whatever, however you want to do it. Uh, we, we need to create an edge for our guys. And, uh we need to have a very spirited practice, and we need, it needs to be physical, and we, we need to be ready, and there can't be any satisfaction with what we've done. Coming into the season, you had high expectations for Jackson Kent. He had his ups and downs, but seemed to really evolve as a player. Talk about the evolution of him as a player this year. 
Well, I, I thought he played maybe maybe his best game of the season the other night. He was tremendous, and not because he scored, but he really tried defensively. And he actually dove on the floor for loose ball, tried to take a charge. He's got a long ways to go in terms of taking charges. Uh, but he really tried hard, and he has done that here for a few weeks. He, he has tried to use practice to get better, and he has gotten better defensively. He's been much more mindful of how important he is to our team at that end of the court. Obviously, when he makes shots, we're a better basketball team. He stretches the defense for us. He made a couple of turnaround jump shots off the dribble I thought were key shots for us. The thing I say about Jackson and Yohani, particularly those two guys, they really want to become the best players they can become, and they're going to get the most out of their abilities, and they'll have great off seasons when that time comes. Saturday, your rebounding was fairly balanced. Is that crucial for your team, not to have one or two guys lead the way, but to have everybody get their hands on the rebounds? Yeah, it's got to be a, a herd mentality, and, and, and I don't know that we did a good enough job. I thought that one of the things that hurt us when they went – when. Uh, Nesmith came in, he, he got four offensive rebounds, a couple of them for stickbacks, and I think he took advantage of Joey McLean. Joey had done a better job blocking out bigger guys, but he did a poor job blocking out that kid. And the plays happen so quick when they're driving. We've got to find guys. We did a poor job. They got a 13 offensive rebounds. That, that number really has to be a few less than that. I mean, we're not going to hold them to zero or two or four. We're not, we're not built like that, but we've, we've got to keep that number lower than 13. I did try and recruit. I don't know if we've been successful, but I tried. So what did you spend the day doing in New York then? Did you just watch some I, film? Trying to get from the, from, the plane, from the plane, from the airport, take a cab to the train station, the train station to D.C., and the D.C. train to a D.C. cab, to a D.C. cab to my car at the plane. So I, I don't know if anything was successful, but I am here. So I, you know, let's have a parade for me for just making it here to O'Neill's today. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. One of my favorite movies. It sounds like a lot of fun. Um, and anyway. Ubers. Now it's Planes, Trains, Automobiles, and Ubers. <laughs> my first Uber experience. Uber's good. And actually, I jumped in an Uber with a JMU grad, a kid from four years ago, graduated in 2012, so however many years that is. Wow. On the plane with me, and he asked me if I wanted to jump in an Uber with him. I said, I don't know what that is, but I'll, I'll try it. If it'll get me where I need to go, I'll, I'll do the Uber. Be careful what you promise there, That's Coach. Right. You never know. Uh, this isn't Brazil. But anyway, um, why don't we go back to Saturday. How did you figure out you guys had gotten a share of the title and what was your reaction at the time? Uh, you, you know, to be, to be honest with you, I didn't – when we won, knowing that Drexel would beat William Mary, it was really right, I think, left down to the one game, Wilmington. Yeah. And ha based on how they played against us, there was no expectation that they were not going to be victorious. So I, I, had, I just happened to pay attention to it, uh, um, you know, in the second half. I wasn't following it, you know, very adroitly. I just happened to look at it in the second half, and, my, and I was a little surprised that they were never in the game from that point forward when I started picking up on it. So, uh, but that's college basketball. They, they went on the road. They had to win a game. They didn't play well. They lost, and that, that's what happens. And, and to be honest with you, I'm not shocked that they lost the game because I, I – I think every team in this league has got a lot of pieces. And when you put your pieces together on a given night, you, you, you can win. And, and if you don't put all your pieces together, you can lose. And uh, we were in a close game at Elon, and they had just beaten Northeastern. So you can't be shocked. If they beat Northeastern and nearly wire to wire, then you can't be shocked that they beat Wilmington. Mm -hmm. So from your perspective, you guys are pretty much the only team in this league that avoided, you know, the quote-unquote upset during the season. But the three teams you tied for the title with, you haven't beaten them. What do you say to the people who think this is a hollow championship? Uh, well, I don't know those people, to be honest with you. I don't know who those people are. I, I, I can find maybe one that thinks it's a hollow championship. But you, you know what? It's not an unbalanced schedule, Nick. It's, we, everybody plays everybody twice. It's not like the old Big East or the, you know, the old SEC. You play everybody twice, and you add them up. And we didn't get upset. And to be honest with you, other than Drexel, I don't know that anybody had as much uh, ripples in their waters as we had this year. We lost some of those games because we had a little bit of dysfunction that we had to navigate, and this team navigated that adversity supremely, and we didn't get upset. And a mark of a good team is not is beating the teams you're supposed to beat, and this team did that. And, um, you know, the other teams didn't do that. So when you add up the wins – 
We had the same amount as everybody else. And when we played uh, the other night against Hofstra, we weren't necessarily playing for first place. Um, Wilmington was. And you can say that, hey, you know what? They should have won that game. Maybe they shouldn't be in first place. That was a win. They controlled their own destiny, and they dropped the ball. Uh, we didn't feel like we controlled our own destiny. We just controlled Hofstra, and we did what we had to do. And you talked about the CA balloting earlier. Do you want to share who you voted as your top five guys? It's a staff vote, I can tell you. My, my <laughs> Rob O'Driscoll is in charge. Um, but to my knowledge, uh, yeah, I would say to you the only thing that we, the only guy that would be a surprise is we put Sproul on the first team. Um, but everybody else, we put Tarpy on the first team. Uh, in fact, we had a lively conversation uh, at, you know, really on the, on the bus ride back from Wilmington that we, we gave a lot of consideration to making him the MVP of the league. And, and uh, it I wouldn't surprise me if he is the MVP of the league. I think he's had an MVP kind of league. I think they've got, if you take Damian Lee without having played a few games, you could make the argument that they've got the two uh, players that had the best seasons in Tarpey and Thornton. Mm -hmm. So then uh, Thornton, Lee, and Wanya Green, you're the three guys? Yep. Coach, uh, I know that a lot of times you like to kind of project throughout the season and 19 wins, 19 and 12 in the regular season. So, f so far, how do you think the body of work before you even get into the conference tournament has been for this club? Well, I, I'm, I'm immensely proud of our team because, uh, and I think my teams have done this every year. We, we've never thought that we weren't going to win. You know, in the years that we haven't won, whether it last year when we were remarkably young and, 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 uh, trying to figure ourselves out. That group felt like they were going to win. Um, and the, in the other years that we have in one year, I thought that we, we had as much adversity in those two years where we didn't win, the previous two years where we didn't win, as, as Drexel's facing now. And so, you know, in my second year, we were 4-14 four and 14 in this league. And what I'm most proud of is 11 of those 14 games, two minutes to go, we had a chance to win the game. 11 of our 14 losses with two of the best players in the league sitting next to me in street clothes. So... When we've, when we've figured it out and we've been healthy, we've been very, very competitive. And this team is no different. Uh, it's been a different challenge this year than some of the other years when we've been challenged. But um, you know, we lost a couple of very, very, very good players. And we're in first place. So that, I think that's a credit to our players and my staff. All right, Coach. Thank you very much. The Dukes against the Pride of Hofstra. Quarterfinals of the CA Championship Tournament. It's a 2.30 tip-off for the Dukes come Saturday. Thank you very much, Coach. Once again, Go congratulations Dukes. on a good season and continue on in Baltimore. No, no, that's